So Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance, is back. Yeah, I'm going to be here in London uh, the last day of October and uh, first few days of November. And depending on how we get on, I may ask you to tap to this clock later. <laughs> I hope that clock can go fast. <laughs> Definitely not as fast as you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Fire away. And here we action. go. Three, two, one. So you're an Irish American from the south side of Chicago. Yes, correct. And that's a pretty tough place to grow up. Yeah, it can be. It can be at times. It was tough. But uh, we were blessed to have great parents, great family. So, um, you know, it all turned out good in the end. Now, you've got lots of special skills, such as being a champion flautist. You play the flute. I do. And you were also a trained amateur boxer. That's true. Tell me a little bit about that. About the boxing? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. Uh, a lot of young uh, lads there had to train themselves to fight. It was a kind of a tough neighborhood. And my brother and I got involved in the, uh, in the, the sport at an early age. And um, it was something that we really got to like. We grew up with, you know, watching Muhammad Ali. And uh, it's, um, he's one of my heroes. So for us to be involved in boxing was a great thing. We really enjoyed it. You became a champion. I did well for myself. I'm, I certainly wouldn't be the next uh, Marciano, but... Uh, you know, for the time I was in it, I, I did very well. What did you actually win? I won some little amateur titles. <laughs> How was it to compare dancing and boxing? And is there an overlap? Well, I guess there is. Um, I mean, uh, uh, Ray Robinson was a tap dancer. Muhammad Ali could dance as well. Uh, Jimmy Cagney and uh, Gene Kelly were both uh, boxers. So there must be something maybe in there somewhere along the line. And I think a lot of great fighters have... Uh, uh, nice fluid movement, which is what makes them great fighters uh, to begin with. Do you think you were born an entertainer? I don't know. That's a tough question. It's a great question. I think in my heart, uh, I didn't know it when I was uh, growing up, but something seems to have taken over, and I think the more I'm on stage, the more I feel comfortable, and then you feel as if you are. How did you get into dance? I did it the noble way. I was dragged by the ears by my mother into the dance class, and uh, it was better to face the dance teacher than get a slap across the head from my mom. And uh, it just kind of took off that way. I got good at it, and then next thing I was dancing. So how old were you when you actually started? I was 11 when I first started. In fact, I was sent home because the teacher said I was too old to dance at 11. Funny thing happened then. I had to go back and learn all the steps from my friends to catch me up to where an 11-year-old would be. When I got that far, I was moving way faster than everyone else, so I began creating my own steps. That's how I landed here. Now, you have a world record for the number of taps a second. That's right. How many? 35 taps in a second. Uh, somebody uh, tells me that it may have been broken, but until I see the videotape, <laughs> I like to see the videotape. But I, if it has, I would be happy. i would be delighted. Is it true that your legs have an insurance premium on them of $40 million? That's right. And it's also true you had or have a world record for being the best paid dancer. How much did you earn a week at your peak? Uh, it's a naughty question, really, isn't it? But it's a pretty impressive statistic. Yeah, in the Guinness Book, I think it said uh, a million six sterling. Uh, pounds? Pounds, yeah. A week? Yeah. But, you know, it doesn't sound much, but you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> Lord of the Dance, where did that idea come from? Uh, a long time ago, you may have remember, I created a show called Riverdance, and um, we... Uh, that was it, an intermission? Uh, it was an uh, interval act, yeah. And, uh, but I saw it more as, uh, as the centerpiece, I guess, uh, of, that, of that show. And thank God it took off for us. And uh, then there was a show uh, created from that, a lot of the numbers that I created myself in that show. And one morning after the show I debuted, I woke up and one of the front page of the paper said, uh, flatly, Lord of the Dance. And that stuck in my head. And then when it came time to create my own show, the title stuck. What are you trying to express when you dance, Michael? Well, I don't know if I'm trying to actually express anything. What I'm trying to do is give out as much energy as I can, positive energy. And all of our dancers do that uh, the same way. My energy would probably be different than most dancers. But when you're out there, you're in the dance. And uh, I've, I, you know, I've kind of only got one speed. I'm going as quick as I can and working as hard as I can and jumping as high as I can. And, 
Uh, the more you give in life, the more you get, and that's how I dance. Is there a spiritual dimension to it? I think there is. Uh, as I say, uh, we give out 100 miles of good energy every night, and at the end of the show, the audience gives it right back. You had a facial skin cancer. That's right, yes, right here. True. And also a mystery illness, is that true? Yeah, that was an unknown virus. Uh, uh, it kept me down for about uh, two or three years, kept me off the stage. And then I had an energy healer work with me that seemed to have cleared that up. And now you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Can't and wait to dance. strong as ever. Can't wait to dance. That's it. Brilliant. That is all. Thanks, my friend. Great interview. Well, it's really good, yeah. really good to meet you. And great to meet you, too. Great questions. Thanks. The question is, and we're still rolling, am I going to be able to persuade you to do a little bit of tapping next door? Well, the answer is even quicker than your clock. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Great good to see you, partner. Really good to see you. Great to see you.